Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend online. His name is Peter, and the last name is Cosadoy. And are you there, Peter? I am here. Thanks for having me, Brad. Are you in some distant land or something? Looks like a big lake behind you. That's not real, is it? <laughs> that's the Long Island Sound, so that's uh, out of my front uh, porch there. I, th <laughs> I thought the Long Island Sound was, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the Jersey. That's, that's south. <laughs> where, where are you located? Uh, Connecticut, yeah. Okay, I've been through there. That's a, I'm that's sorry a, to hear that. No, that's okay. It's a, that's a <laughs> nice place. It's nice. I'm from Boston, so to me, Connecticut was sort of like the random, like empty yard in between two house parties, right? So, uh, but you know, I live, my wife's here, so she she dragged me down. It's it's we live in a nice area. I can't complain. Yeah, I remember uh, for a while. I we spent a couple months in New York, and it was interesting because you could drive, and as soon as you get to the border, the streets change. They go from kind of mm -hmm. rugged to beautiful. <laughs> it's like crossing <laughs> borders. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But that's uh, taxes, right? That's it. So you said uh, wife, you got, you married and kids, you got a bunch of them? Married, no kids, just a very fat dog. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a little dog. I don't know how fat he is, but it's kind of fun to have it. How long do you live there? Uh, we've only been here for a little over a year um, okay. in Connecticut since 2008. Uh, that's when I came down here, started my first company uh, right out of college. But you're an East Coaster. Yeah, my wife says I'm an East Coast guy. Every time I'm like, California is so beautiful. She's like, no, no, honey, you're an East Coast guy. I think she's making fun of me, but I don't know quite how. Um, <laughs> well, I'm a Midwest guy. And the way I look at it is the people on the East Coast, they tell it like it is, and that's the way it is. In the Midwest, they never make a decision. California, they tell it like it is, but that's not how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you pretty much nailed it there. Yeah. <laughs> that seems the way it is. So let's talk about your book. And this is interesting. I just uh I just um popped it up when I was looking on the internet. It's about it's called Honest to Greatness. And uh it's interesting because I was just telling you earlier on that um I had a conversation with somebody and we were getting along good. It's just a text conversation, but they said something, and then when I went on the internet and did some research. It wasn't true what they said. So yeah. I lost a slight little bit of respect out of that. And the, like in these world, the, the world today, I know what happens too, like uh, for like jobs and people looking for jobs and on LinkedIn, they're this. Then you go look at them on Facebook, there's something else. So you got to be kind of mm -hmm. careful how you uh, portray your honesty. What, what, what yeah. triggered you to write this book? Well, yeah, I mean, you're 100% you're right. Brad, we're living in a newly transparent world where literally you can find out anything about me that you want uh, in, you know, 0.7 seconds. It takes Google to pull up all the results. So the whole premise of the book is in that world, there is no incentive to do anything but be honest and transparent. And if we look around at what's going on now, you know, whether it's uh, your favorite corporate scandal that's come to light or, you know, remember when all those parents were paying to get their kids into USC, you know, that all comes to light. Uh, you know, the horrendous murder of George Floyd that we all got to see with our own eyes because it was being filmed. Like someone somewhere is recording what is going on. You and I are recording this conversation, right? right. And so, you know, in that world, why do anything but be honest? And, and what I show in the book is that leaders and organizations that actually use honesty, like not as a touchy feely core value, but as a business strategy, end up creating way more profitability and ultimately dominating their competitors just by using something that, by the way, we all learned when we were like four years old. Sure. And I wish it would come back because there's a lot of stuff out there that people think that they can hide behind their keyboards and, and different screen names and all that. Or you, you go to a business and they give you the runaround. Well, you know, this have just be honest with me. Just tell yeah. me that you screwed up or tell me, tell me what's real and I'll have much more respect for you and I'll come back as a customer. But if you lie to so me, simple. there's other places. Yeah. So it's again, so what was it that, what, what was it that triggered you to, to write this book? I, I saw yeah, that you did a, so did a Ted talk also. Was it about? I did. Some topic? Yeah. So here's what, here's what happened, Brad. So I uh, started my first company in 2008. Didn't have any idea what I was doing. Um, my business partner and I made several pivots, eventually ended up as a full service marketing agency. 
And as that, you know, we ended up on the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing companies in the US for a couple of years in a row. You know, we got to work with startups to Fortune 500s and even threw a party for Warren Buffett one time. That's a whole other story. Wow. And uh, what I was fascinated by is that some organizations we would work with, we would come in, we would give them you know, amazing growth strategies and insights from their frontline teams and build a growth plan. And they would take it and run with it and just like, they'd get a massive return on their investment with us and they were happy and they'd stay for years. It was awesome. Other organizations, we'd give the same love and care and attention and strategy and everything else. And they would just blow up on the launch pad. They could not get out of their own way. They would descend into politics and infighting and BS. And I used to sit there, you know, 20 something year old me and say like, what are the, like, what are these people morons? I mean, how did they possibly get to become, you know, executives at this company that can't even get out of their own way. And, you know, that, that wasn't true, Brad, you know, it was me being 20 something moron, no executive that's risen through the ranks is stupid. What I actually have decided through, you know, working with all these companies and through, you know, research and the stories I tell in the book is that many people in authority are simply dishonest. And I don't mean like outright, like they intentionally dishonest, like they're lying yeah, not, to people yeah. for their own benefit. I mean, they're, they're being dishonest on the levels that I describe in the book, and there are three of them. Either they're being dishonest about what's going on in the world around them, you know, how society is changing, how consumer habits are shifting, and so on and so forth. Uh, they might be being dishonest about the people around them, you know, what their fellow executives know and, and think and feel, or what their own customers are telling them that they refuse to believe. And finally, many folks uh, in, in authority positions simply become dishonest with themselves, you know, with their own biases and self-limiting beliefs and ego and blind spots. And meanwhile, the organizations that get honest on all three of those levels, they are the ones that end up succeeding because it really is that simple. You know, what I, what I couldn't rectify, Brad, was like in every um, elective course I could take in undergrad, I took, I took it at the business school. And, you know, business is very simple. It's, it's columns and rows and you know, revenues and costs. It's, it's very logical, right? Nothing prepared me for coming out in the, in the, into the business world and realizing that executives actually don't make decisions based on logic at all half the time. You know, mostly it's based on like, I, I think this and I feel that and it just crushed me. And it wasn't until I went back to school to get an MBA at Columbia and started to study uh, Warren Buffett, that I realized I'm not alone. He actually has a, a word for this. It's called the institutional imperative. And it describes how organizations just get stuck like a boulder rolling downhill. And even though what they're doing is completely illogical and probably even harmful, they, for, for many reasons, often can't get out of their own way. So this, sure. this has fascinated me, and that's why I wrote a book about it. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I'm in the right now. I'm in the affiliate marketing world, and that's a lot of the make money online kind of thing. And a lot of these younger generation kids, they figure, okay, this is the way you do it. You create a landing page, get a bunch of testimonials, and how do you get testimonials? You go to the convention and you ask, hey, would you give me a testimonial, and someone gets on and goes, yeah, Brad is just the greatest guy to work with. He's so super. I I would suggest you always work. They don't really know, Brad. But they're saying that because that's just supposed to do in the testimonial. So that's like one of those little white lies kind of thing. Yeah. It's not totally integritous as far as honesty goes. And uh, I see what you're saying when you got that honesty that's happening outside of you. You know, people doing testimonials about you. It seems like the right thing to do. But what happens is, like when I research somebody, I just go and I look at the testimonials. And then all of a sudden I see somebody else and they've got a testimonial from this guy. Then you look and research a little bit more and you find out there's, this, there's a, uh, a collaborative of people that will do testimonials for only $10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you buy them on Fiverr and they'll do testimonials for you. And all of a sudden you realize that this is just not honest. And then it, you lose yeah. all respect for it. So I can see it's pretty interesting. And um, this is the day. Th these are the days that just have to be honest, sincere, authentic, and uh, genuine, you know? Yeah, well, or, or you eventually get found out and exposed. And the question is, you know, is that all worth the risk? You raise an interesting point, Brad, which, which actually not a lot of people ask me about, but you put your finger on it, which is what about, you know, fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> so we have this thing. I mean, if we fake it till we make it, can that still work? It, certainly it's worked for some folks. And I answer it with this, you know, there was a time in our agency 
where we had never done what we're saying we're going to do for clients, right? You know, I remember our first big, big client was over a million dollar account. Um, we were doing video production work for them and they called us one day and they were like, listen, uh, we're going to go out to bid for all of our services. We're going to hire a full service agency, you know, designers, copywriters, media, the whole thing, big account. Do you guys want to come in and pitch? You know, do you even have those resources? Can you do it? And, uh, you know, we kind of asked ourselves internally, like, okay, well, do, do we have, you know, copywriters and designers and all this stuff we need? No, we don't. Um, so we said, yeah, we'd love to pitch, you know, we'll be there at whatever day and time that, <laughs> that you need us to be. And we won the pitch, Brad, and mm -hmm. we did an outstanding job for them. And so the question is, does that little white lie, is that dishonest? And the, the way I think about it is, if you promise to someone that you're going to do something and you will move mountains to do it, or you'll be willing to give them all of their money back and say, yeah, you know what? You're not going to pay a dime for this because I messed up. If you're willing to go that far, then I would count that as integrity, actually. I really would. It's the folks that promise something and under deliver and then run, right? Walk away, refuse to admit wrong. Do we, that to me is, is inherently dishonest, you know, because otherwise nobody would do anything if they hadn't already done it, right? We have to have some allowance for, I think I can, I know I can, and I'm willing to put my money and my, my reputation on the line. But it's certainly a gray area. Well, was it, was it Seth Godin that wrote a book, All Marketers Are Liars? It, yeah. That, yeah. Because it, it is kind of that. I mean, when you, when you see this beautiful vacation at the whatever resort in Jamaica, and it looks all blue and everything is clean, and you know that before they did that, that video, they were scrubbing the tables and sweeping the floors and polishing things and making sure it's all right. And then post-production, they, they did some color editing and stuff to make it all shiny and wonderful. And everybody, make sure you smile. Make sure you wear some good, clean clothes, press. Like, I've done some infomercial work. And it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing when they make it. They got that uh, special little thing, that food processor thing. It does all that. And then you realize that it's duct taped down to the table so it doesn't move. Yep. That's in not as you're losing integrity there. You're better. <laughs> so I think a lot of that, and it's changing, I think. People are looking for, like you said, with the whole they can record these things on video when things are happening. The yep. truth is coming out. It and is. you're better off just to be honest. And that's why I do these videos like this. Like I said, if if the cat jumps up on the table or the dog walks in or whatever, that's life. That's the way this works these days, especially in the COVID situation where we're all working from remote or whatever. This is the way yeah. it is. So it's true. And there's a there is an opportunity cost to being dishonest in, in some way, shape, or form. You know, for example, like I've had to learn the power of like vulnerability and to come on these shows and sort of just talk from the hip and be me. I happen to swear a lot. You may hear me say, like, you know, people get get over their self with many bullshit, stuff like that. That's gonna turn some people off, Brad. But like guess Jerry what? Banner Chuck. I, yeah, <laughs> right. But like I don't want everyone in the world to come work with me. I want some people to be turned off by me, say, hey, that guy's an a-hole and he talks about honesty, like he's all high and mighty and he sucks. That's fine. But other people will hear me and be like, yeah, I drive with that. Peter's awesome. I want to go have a conversation with him, right? And that's what the, the dirty little secret about marketing that few people talk about is that the more polarizing you can be, actually you end up creating raving fans. By the well, way, we know that from our politics these days. You know, this is not a political book, and I, you know, I don't want to get into that. But if you if you take a look at how polarizing some of our politicians are, you actually see this phenomenon that you can create hate, totally. but also you create love. You know, across the spectrum. So, well, and, and the other side of it, you do create that love, and you do create that hate. But you know what? Those haters don't necessarily unsubscribe. It, right, true. Exactly right. And that you know. It is interesting. And that's what ties back to what you were saying earlier about like, you know, the glossy brochure. That's our fault as consumers. You know, in fact, the first chapter in my book is called Fraud is Our Fault. When we, run, when we collectively, uh, you know, succumb to herd mentality and we don't ask ourselves, hey, is that, is that true? Like, is that actually the picture? Is that actually what it's like? Is that headline on the news actually true? Or are they trying to persuade me? When we don't ask those critical questions and try to get at the honesty behind these things we're observing, we fall into the herd mentality trap. So, you know, I want everyone out, out there to realize we have a role to play in the marketing, the sales, the bullshit that comes at us. Because as we fall into those funnels and click and watch, we are perpetuating these types of behaviors. So I don't, I'll get you know, off my soapbox. A now. big reason I think that, uh, that, that it's so important is 
it's so easy for a person if they say that I don't trust you because you, you told me a little lie, it's so easy for them to go someplace else. There's so many other places to go to get whatever they want these days. Yeah. It, it, it isn't like, you know, the, there's only one hardware store in town. You can go on the internet to find anything, anywhere. So you, you need to be straight up. But I want to kind of get into and, and find out more about, like you got your book, you mm -hmm. do speaking. I'm assuming that uh, mm -hmm. after COVID, you'll actually, you, you come to conferences and do keynotes and things on that topic. I do, yeah, but I'm doing a ton of virtual events now too. So Right, so there's definitely that. Um, do you have your own events that you do or do you just if someone brings you in and you do a Zoom or virtual or live or do you do your own talks? Yeah, I'm going to start a, I, I wanted to start a conference this year, you know, my own conference. I think that'll obviously have to wait until the zombie apocalypse is over. Um, but one Truth thing Con. I do, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the honesty <laughs> summit I had, but TruthCon actually is really good too. Um, but one thing I do, um, you know, one of my platforms is forum. Uh, which is the program I run for entrepreneurs. And that program, Brad, came out of uh, when I built my first million dollar company and was able to get into some of the higher level entrepreneurship organizations that we have that most entrepreneurs don't even know about because you have to be a certain size to qualify. And one of the most amazing things about that was I got into a group of other entrepreneurs with 100% confidentiality. And the whole idea was that we were able to get vulnerable about what's like really actually happening behind the scenes, you know, not only in our business, but also in our personal lives and our family lives. Because 99% of business problems for entrepreneurs are personal problems in disguise. So, you know, once I was able to see what, you know, being honest with yourself could do, you know, as a leader, as a business owner, I said to myself, this is crazy. I mean, I needed this in the 10 years I was building my company, not after I have, you know, a team and clients and all this stuff. So that's when I launched my own forum program for entrepreneurs. We meet once a month on a Zoom call and it's all about getting to those blind spots, getting honest and, and becoming more empowered people and leaders. And then uh, on another topic, because you know, my background's in the event industry. I told you earlier with my magic thing that got me into mm -hmm. events and I, I created this trade show as a, for event planners to come and find all the resources they need. So I had 2000 event planners from Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, Honeywell, General Mills, Pillsbury, Smart. all those people coming to me and telling me how much money they had and when they wanted to spend it and what they wanted to spend it on. <laughs> that was my lead list for my magic thing. So Smart. that's now called attraction marketing. Mm -hmm. And I still implement that kind of thing even online. So the, the re I'm, I'm in the event business. And um, I was going to ask you, do you ever do anything like, um, say, retreats or anything where you yeah. would uh, go take off to like Costa Rica and get a bunch of corporate CEOs or upper management or whatever that come down and, and do some workshops? And Absolutely. Some That's where the real magic is. I mean, so, you know, I can do a 20, 30 minute talk and I do, you know, I have a TED talk and, and so on and so forth. But the real fun is when I do that and then parlay that into, okay, let's put this into practice. Like, let's, let's get real honest here, you know, on all the levels and create some transformational change. And through questions we ask and exercise we do, you lit, I literally watch people walk out as different minded folks than when they walk in. That to me is one of the most incredible uh, parts of my job. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, we should maybe talk about something like that. Cause I mean, there's the COVID thing right now, but it's going to open up. I mean, everything Absolutely. does recycle. And who knows, maybe you want to come over to the Minneapolis area. We've got a lot of corporate here. Like I said, the Cargill, Medtronic, you know, Mayo Clinic, all that right here in Minneapolis. That would be great, especially in August. Maybe not so in January. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I did the Minneapolis. So I, I've been in Minneapolis in like the middle of January. And it was so, I, I've never experienced cold like that in my life. I grew up in Boston, by the way. So that's saying a lot. And I just remember like college age kids walking down the street in shorts, exactly. like it That's was bizarre. nothing. I, I couldn't, I was, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. It, anyway. It's not as bad as the, I mean, we do get hundred degree temperature here. So it's not like, a, you know, it's not always like Antarctic or anything like that, mm -hmm. but in the winter it does get cold and you just got to deal with it. <laughs> but you know maybe, what else is on my, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know what else is on my bucket list is the Minnesota State Fair. They're not having it this year. I know. Post COVID, so it's it staying a big on my thing, list. You know, Texas says they got the big one, but theirs is longer than ours, so that's not fair. <laughs> pun intended. Pun, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but everything on a stick, yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's it's yeah. amazing. I mean, there's companies, unfortunately, in the event business. There's these all these 
vendors that they don't get to do that this year, but they used to make millions in oh, 10 sure. days and uh, they don't get to do it this year. So what they've done is they've figured out little spots and they've created a little map and they're, you know, so Martha's cookies is going to be over on Snelling Avenue with their truck or whatever. Hmm. They're doing That's like terrible. a virtual distance kind of thing. So we get creative. Yeah. Well, Peter, is there anything else you could share? Maybe you've got a program that you're offering aside from your book or something, a way that people can opt in and get to think it's sad, but they need to learn how to be honest. Absolutely. You can teach I, them. <laughs> I wish that upon everyone. It, it took me a while, you know, I'll be honest. That's how I kind of came to this. So definitely wasn't born this way. I had to learn the power of honesty and vulnerability. So Brad, uh, if you head on over to honesttogreatness.com, it's honesttogreatness.com, uh, there's a free 21 question honesty quiz, which will tell you which honesty leadership profile you fit into and uh, how honest you really are if you're brave enough to know. Um, and then from there, you can kind of branch out into all the different programs and things I offer. Okay, I will put that in the uh, YouTube link in the description so people can uh, access it that way and then I'll propagate that thing out there. And again, uh, down the road, like if you want to do some more of these things, uh, I always encourage like a, a series, maybe there's some other things that we could put in place. Because some people think that just this one off stuff makes miracles happen. But just like everything, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> everything's a marathon, not a sprint. Exactly. So if you want to stand, we can have a little chit chat further. Other than that, I'm going to put this in the can, beam it up to the universe and let people find it and propagate it out to the world. So I appreciate you, you taking it. the time, Peter. Thank you. Peace. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for being honest.